Hey, what's up everybody? 8-Bit Flashback here. Today I'll show you how to repair a Sega CD Model 1 with no power. Quite often, the no power issues with the Sega CD add-ons is just a blown 2.5 amp Pico fuse. So for this video, I'll show you how to fix this from start to finish. So I recently purchased this Sega CD Model 1 in as-is, untested condition from eBay for only 70 bucks. So it was no surprise to me when it showed up it didn't work. But luckily this was an easy fix and it was just a blown fuse. So to start off with, on the top of the Sega CD Model 1, there's going to be two screws located on the side right here. Go ahead and remove those. Now go ahead and flip it around and there's going to be six screws located on the bottom right here. So we got one screw located in each corner, then two in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all these screws. Now I'm gonna carefully hold the two halves together. So I'm gonna keep them firmly pressed together, then flip this upside down to where the screws fall out. And be careful not to lose any of these screws. So there should be six different screws in total that come out the bottom of the Sega CD. Just make sure to keep track of those and put those in a safe place. Now it's time to remove the top half of the Sega CD. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this around so we can see the front of it. And what we want to do is pull out on the side right here just a little bit. Now start pulling the top half of the case upward and off to the side slightly. And be careful not to damage the lock that's located on the side of the case right here. And if you're doing this right, that top half of the case should come off really easy. And now you can just set that top half of the case off to the side to get that out of the way. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn the Sega CD around to where we can see the back side of this. And located right here is where that Pico fuse is going to be located. This is a small 2.5 amp fuse, and that's located right here. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can see this from a couple different angles. Here it is again, outlined in yellow. And here it is from a side view. Right here where I'm pointing with the screwdriver, and it's also outlined in the yellow. And there's another close-up of it. So this is the fuse that usually causes issues with no power for your Sega CD. When these fuses blow, that cuts off all power to the Sega CD. Some other common power failures with the Sega CDs is the power jack itself. Sometimes the contact legs on the power jack come loose or corroded and may need repaired. And some other common issues could just be a couple of bad capacitors. But luckily I do have a few different ways I'll show you how to determine if the fuse is the issue or not, that way we're not guessing. And this first method might be a little bit risky, so please proceed at your own risk. What this involves is using a screwdriver with a flat blade. And what we want to do is put this in between the fuse right here, then turn that sideways to where it makes contacts with the metal on both ends of where the fuse is soldered to the board. And what this is going to do is bridge those two points together and bypass that fuse. And you really want to be careful when you're doing this. You want to make sure not to make contact with anything else that might be metal on this Sega CD. You want to make sure only to touch these two points because if you touch anything else, that might cause a short and cause damage to your Sega CD. And as you can see right here, I'm extremely close to the metal shielding on my Sega CD. So just be careful when you're using this method. So now I'm going to go ahead and test that fuse out to make sure it is indeed blown. But first I need to hook up my Sega Genesis. And to hook up my Sega Genesis, I'm going to leave that top half of the case off, so I will need a shim. And for a shim, I am using a CD case, and that makes a pretty good spacer to make up the distance for the top half of the case not being on. Otherwise, when you go to plug in your Sega Genesis to the Sega CD, it might be at a crooked angle. And this shim helps it plug in straight. And as you can see here, we have access to that fuse, so we can bridge it. And now it's time to go ahead and plug in the power. And you want to make sure to use the correct power adapter. A lot of times that's why these fuses get blown is by using the wrong power adapter. So now I have the power plugged into both the Genesis and the Sega CD and I'm carefully going to bridge those two points on that fuse together. And while doing this I'm going to go ahead and turn the power on on the Sega Genesis and test to see if my Sega CD does turn on. And it looks like I just got lucky because my Sega CD is now alive. Now I'm going to go ahead and push that reset button to see if that tray pops out. And it looks like I just got lucky again because I got a free game with this Sega CD. It's only Star Wars Rebel Assault, but it's still cool because it's free. So I have now determined that the fuse is the issue with this Sega CD. Here's a second method to determine if the fuse is the issue. And I would say this method is a little bit safer. So for this method, I'm using a multimeter on the DC 20 volt setting. 
And what we want to do here is measure the voltage on each side of the fuse location. So the first step is going to be finding a grounding point on the Sega CD. So with the black probe, I'm going to make contact with that silver pad right there. Now with the red probe, I'm going to touch one side of the fuse location. So right here, I'm going to touch the leg on one side of the fuse. And it looks like it's reading 13.92. Now I'm going to move that red probe to the opposite end of that fuse. And it should get the same reading if it is indeed a good fuse. But as you can see here, it's measuring 2.11. So that means we have a power loss inside this fuse. And I know this is only a 2.5 amp fuse, but remember we're measuring voltage, not amperage. And the voltage should be the same on both sides of the fuse. And I would like to mention that the readings you might get on your multimeter might be a little bit lower than what I have in this video. But whatever readings you do end up with, they should still be consistent with each other on each side of the fuse. So that's two different methods to check and see if that fuse is blown. Now I'm going to use some wire snips and cut this fuse off the board. And you want to make sure to cut this fuse as low as possible to the board. And here's a look at that fuse that I just cut off. And now it's time to install a new fuse. So these are known as a Pico fuse and they're 2.5 amps. And you can find these on eBay for about six bucks for four of them. And I'll make sure to post a link down below. And these fuses do come with straight ends, so I like to bend these on each side of the fuse, then cut them to where they're about half inch long. Now it's time to heat up my soldering iron, and I do have some electrical solder along with some soldering flux. And I'm just going to make a small ball of solder right at the tip of my soldering iron. And now I'm going to use some needle nose pliers to hold that Pico fuse in place, and go ahead and solder each side of that Pico fuse at the base. And you don't need to get carried away with a bunch of solder. You just need enough on there to make sure that this makes contact with the PCB board and you have a good connection. So I have it all soldered in place now and the fuse is just a little bit crooked so I'm just going to go ahead and manually pull it back and straighten it out that way it has good clearance all the way around the fuse. And here's a couple close up pictures after replacing the fuse. And I didn't do the best soldering job but it'll work. Now before I put the Sega CD back together I'm going to do a quick test. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up the Sega Genesis and the power and make sure that this thing works. So I got my new fuse in place and it's testing time. So it's time to hit that power switch and hopefully everything turns on like it should. Power on and we got power on the Sega CD. We got the green and red light so we should be good to go. And now I'm gonna do one more test before I put this back together. I'm gonna go ahead and measure with that multimeter to show you that it should have the same power on both sides of that fuse. So on one side, I got about 11.99, and on the opposite side, I'm getting the same reading. So everything's reading like it should, and now it's time to put the Sega CD back together. And this is pretty simple to assemble back together. Just make sure everything's aligned properly, and it should slide right into place. After sliding the top part of the case on, go ahead and hold those two halves together, then flip it over, and install those six screws. After getting those in, go ahead and flip it back around, and put the remaining two screws in place. And now it's time for a real test. I've actually not even tested the game on this Sega CD yet, so this will be my first test with trying to actually play a game. The only test I performed is making sure that CD tray opens and that it powers up. Everything else is a mystery at this point. So fingers crossed, I'm going to push the start button. And I don't think that was part of the Sega CD BIOS, so the game should be working. But now I've just got a black screen. Oh, that's not good. Come on. Well, it looks like it might... Oh, never mind. There it is. We have liftoff. Now it's time to play one of the greatest games ever made for the Sega CD. This is Star Wars Rebel Assault. No, I'm just kidding. This is actually not a very good game. It's okay, but far from being a great game. Well, I think it's that time again, and it's time for me to go. Hopefully, if you have some issues with your Sega CD not turning on, this will help you get it fixed. Have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time. And if you like this video, if you could, hit that like button.